I'm here with Dr. Romano to do a problem on thermochemistry. Hi, I'm Dr. Romano. I'd like to go over a question with you involving some phase changes. So come around and let's take a look at what I have for you. We're going to do this problem in two parts. It says that compound X has a melting point of 6.8 degrees and a boiling point of 95 Celsius. And what I want you to first do is to sketch the heating curve. If 45.3 grams of X, which is at negative 5 degrees Celsius, is converted to vapor at 165 Celsius. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off at minus 5 degrees and we are going to go all the way up to the melting point, which we learn is 6.8. At a melting point, the temperature is constant. So therefore, we level it off. Never forget, during a phase change, there's no change in temperature. Once we do this, we're then going to continue to heat it up. And now it's in the liquid phase. Before it was solid liquid. We're going to go all the way up to 95 degrees. And then we learn that that's the boiling point. So once again, it's out of phase change. Levels off. And then we're going to go all the way up to 165. So we're going to go from here all the way up to 165. So we've gone from solid then solid to liquid, then liquid, liquid to gas, and we brought it into the vapor phase. Now, part B of this question is as follows. We're going to find the heat needed to take that 45.3 grams of X, which was the solid, and we, which was at negative 5 degrees, and we're going to go all the way to the vapor phase at 165. I'll admit this is a little long for the DAT, but I'll make a deal with you. As long as you can just set this problem up, I think for the DAT you're fine. Unless the numbers will be really easy. The question here, or the problem here, involves multiple transitions. So notice we're going to first have to take the solid, we're going to have to heat it, we're going to have to melt it, raise the temperature, boil it, and then go up to the 165. So I think it's best to do these problems and sketch the diagram like we just did. We're going to start at minus 5, go up to the melting point. We're going to melt it away. Then we're going to raise the temperature up to the 95. Notice I'm using the values here. Then we're going to boil it and then go up to the 165 that I requested. Now, the best way to do this is to set up a little interval that in order to go from this point to this point, we're going to go through interval 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Anytime you go up a hill, as you can see, we're going up a hill three different times. The formula I'm going to use is delta H equals MC delta T, where the C is the specific constant. Notice I gave you the specific heats of the solids, liquids, and gases. The heat needed to melt something, that's what we mean by the heat of fusion. And this heat, which is line 4, is the heat of vaporization, the heat needed to convert it into the vapor. So delta H would be the delta H of interval, interval 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. The delta H of 1 would be MC delta T, but you're using the specific heat of the solid. Then delta H2, which would be the mass times the heat of fusion. Delta H3, which will represent this line, would be MC delta T, where you're using the specific heat of the liquid. Then 4 would be mass heat of fusion. And then finally, we're going up MC delta T, but you're in the gas phase. And then all I did was plug in the numbers. For example, the mass we know is 45.3. The specific heat, you got to be careful, you're in the solid phase, 1.23. And you're going from negative 5 to 6.8. Well, you first bring it up to zero, so you got to add five. That'll get you to zero, and then 6.8 on top of that is where I get to 11.8. I actually have students who get confused on that. So to go from a negative five to a 6.8 is a change of 11.8. There's the mass again. This represents the heat of fusion. There's my mass. This represents the specific heat of the liquid, 2.16. And once again, there's the delta T from 6.8 to 95 is a difference of 88.2. There's the mass, heat of fusion, mass. Notice I'm using the specific heat now of the gas phase, vapor phase. 
and then from 95 to 165 was a change of 70. Adding them all together, even though that would take long on the dad, as long as you understand how to do it, I think you're in good shape here. So the delta H came out to be 3.3 to the fourth. What if in this example or on the dot, I said to you, I want you to find the heat, but you're gonna go from negative five and I want you to melt it all. So if you wanted to melt it all, all you would have done was just use these two equations. You would have first used the heat of delta H1 to bring it up to the melting point, and then you would have just used the heat of fusion. So part of the graph would be useful because you wouldn't have to go any further. If you really understand what's, what's here and you understand at least setting it up for the one and destroyer, I think you're good to go. Okay, I hope that clears up any difficulties you have on phase changes in heating curves. All right, good day to you.